Welcome church in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We love you. We praise God for you. Thank you for coming to worship together. We are thrilled to have you join us today for Bethesda Church Live. Worshiping together united by God's Holy Spirit from wherever you're joining us, whether you're in your, your living room or on your cell phone or actually today you might be watching us from prison. Yes, last Monday I talked to Chaplain Paul at Oak Park Heights Prison and I, I talked to him about how we can no longer come in and do the physical services but we're live streaming. What if we burned our services to a DVD, would they be able to distribute them? And Chaplain Paul, thank you, this is a big shout out for him, he said he would get it distributed on the Prisoner Channel TV network so that you know they can watch it on the TVs in the prisons so uh, welcome thank you for joining us and so please this is thank you for your prayers this is a huge answer to prayer and continue to pray as we reach out on Facebook YouTube twitch to reach out to the young people and the gamers and then now into the prisons and so continue to pray that God will continue to expand the reach of the gospel and the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now share the links with those that you know and share with people if you know someone in prison let them know that they could ask their chaplain to get it on the offender TV network and we can do that so our call to worship today is from Hebrews chapter 4 so if you have your Bibles Hebrews chapter 4 I'll read verses 12 to 16 it says for the Word of God is living and active sharper than any double-edged sword it penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account therefore since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens Jesus the Son of God left us let us hold firmly to the faith that we profess for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who has been tempted in every way let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need so again we love you we thank God for each and every one of you watching today and we want to be of help to you so please contact us if you have any needs or prayer requests you can go to BethesdaChurch.com and click the top where it says get connected and you can send a, a direct message to us about your need or your concern or your prayer requests and we would love to pray for you and help you so let us open in this worship time in prayer Lord we come to you now thanking you and praising you for the great God that you are, that you are sovereign, that you are in control. You know each and every one that's watching this broadcast, Lord, in their situation, their challenges, and you want to help them. You want to reach out to them. So, Lord, help us to draw close to you and receive that mercy and that grace today. Thank you for your word that, that encourages us, that gives us wisdom, that guides us, that directs us. And Lord, I pray for all of those that are hurting or struggling and finding times difficult to know that you are just one step away. You're just one prayer away, Lord, that they could reach out to you today and put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. And I thank you for that transforming power of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. By faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over me to prepare us a dwelling place to stand in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. On that beautiful shore, we shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melody 
songs of the blessed, and our spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. That beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days in the Well, good morning, everyone. Good to hear that. A few voices here today. Um, I'm here today for, mostly to uh, introduce uh, Jonathan Molina. But before I get to that, I'd like to just bring up a couple things. You know, like many of us, or most of us probably, I've been watching church on my couch for the last eight weeks. The last time we met here was on March 15th. And um, being here in the building for the, really for a church service for the first time since then, it's, it's good to be here. And I'd like to thank Al and Lisa for the being diligent and being here every Sunday. For Andy and Nate back in the control booth for making it work so that we can see it at home through the multiple venues and then for Dwight for kind of setting all this up for us and then for Joel and Jonathan have been here most of the time too so it's it's been it's been really great to, to be able to have church throughout this whole time and we're hopeful that we can be soon gathering back again in full. Um, and the other thing I'm, I'm charged with here at the church is I'm the church treasurer. And um, I just kind of went through things to see how we're doing. And um, I think that overall we need to uh, give ourselves a little pat on the back because I think we're doing, for the, for the time that we've been um, Missing, it's it, you know, it's an extra effort for all of us to kind of um, make our contributions. We have to put in the mail. We have to make sure we get tell our bank or do whatever we do to get it here. But um, for the last, looking at the last two weeks of uh, March and uh, for the month of April, I don't have we don't have the numbers for May, but uh, we're holding our own, and I think that's good. Um, it, but uh, there's because our needs still go on. We have missionaries we support around the world. We have a building that we have to take care of. We have staff that we have to pay. So I think everyone should be uh, feel good about that. And but don't stop. Keep going. With that, um, you know, the mission committee. Um, the last Sunday that we met, we we met with uh, Jonathan Molina. And uh, I'll just read, uh, and then I guess I should say since then, Carol and I have uh, uh, met with J Jonathan a couple times through Zoom and talked to him about what uh, his plans are. So here's Jonathan. But uh, I, I would like to read the, the letter, you know, that from the mission committee in support of him. Uh, Jonathan uh, shared his tes testimony about his desire to serve the Lord in ministry with Operation Mobilization. When he was 18, he went on, on the ship Logos for three months as part of the STEP program. While on the ship, he was challenged in his faith and how the uh, ship's uh, Christian bookstore ministry operated from port to port. 
When he finished the three-month program, he thought he would go on to school for ministry classes instead of change of plans. He felt a strong calling to go on the ship for a two-year term, and that's why he met with us. To start the process, he needs a partner church or sending church, and that would be us. Our church would like to send him out with our blessing and prayers and commit to ongoing care for him in partnership with Operation Mobilization. Providing financial support is important, though not required, as part of the ongoing care from Ascending Church. The mission committee would like to, uh, well, that didn't happen because we were shut down. We were going to host a luncheon for him in April. <laughs> well, things changed. But, uh, so, um, and it, basically he'll be, you know, he needs to get things together to go, and, we've, and that's what Carol and I have been meeting with him a couple times on, just to kind of go through what he's going through and, and trying to help him through that path. So with that, it's all yours, John. Do you want this, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, hello, church. To start out, I'd like to read you guys a passage of scripture. Oops, I just took out my bookmark, but I can find it really quickly. Hold on. Just give me a second. There we are. All right. So I'm going to read to you, if you guys have your Bibles with you, Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Just one, pa just one verse, but it's a very good one. But Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. So... First off, I'd want to thank this church. I want to thank Bruce and Carol and, and just everyone uh, for... Uh, I, I've already talked to some people about, uh, about the ship, about this, um, and I've received nothing but encouragement and support from the church, and I'm very, I'm very grateful, and it makes me very excited to go into this, uh, to go into this partnership and to go into this, uh, to move forward with you guys as my sending church. It is, uh, I feel very blessed and very thankful. And, um, when I was, uh, well, obviously I'm the son of my mom and dad, who were missionaries since before I was even born. So missionary has always been a word that corresponded with me my, my whole life. Um, so it was natural for me to kind of want to be a missionary growing up. Um, at first there was, well, my life as a missionary kid was awesome. It was exciting, adventurous. And in my like, early teens, the idea of being a missionary kind of went along with like, ooh, this, this thrill, this, this adventurous life, that's what I want. But lately, uh, I've, I, I've gone on, I've been very much challenged as to what the word missionary actually means. It is not so much a call to adventure, but it's a call to service, it's a call to duty, it's a call to, it's a call to love, and it's, it's a call to obey. So, uh, quite recently, this year, I decided to join the Logos Hope, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a, a minute here to explain kind of what it is. Um, the Logos Hope is a ship, you know, those things that float on water. It, um, it's an evangelical ship with a, a ministry towards the people in least reached countries. Um, it travels all around the world, it never stops, um, and it will minister to each port that it stops on. Um, its motto that it kind of uses is knowledge, help, and hope. Knowledge it provides uh, through its bookstore. It has a, uh, a bookstore that is uh, kind of the bulk of the ministry that it uses as kind of a business that it can get more access to countries that it wouldn't normally gain access to as just a missionary ship. Um, it sells educational and religious books at a much cheaper price than you can find um, in the normal stores in these countries. Some of these countries actually don't even uh, have books that you can buy um, in the first place. So it's, um, it goes to these different countries and it sells books at affordable prices. It changes depending on whatever the, uh, whatever the currency is or whatever uh, the however rich the country is that's there, it changes to make it really affordable for um, the, the, 
even the lowest person uh, so that anyone can afford the books. Um, so knowledge and then help. Uh, while the ship is in whatever port it's at, it will send out teams of uh, crew members to go and help the, pe the communities on shore, whether that be um, helping the local churches. Uh, uh, sometimes they build churches, whether it's uh, prison ministries, um, it, absolutely anything. Uh, the ship will stay at a port on average for a week or two at a time. And each port, there are hundreds and hundreds of different ministries uh, uh, ex completed uh, every day there's there's dozens and dozens of teams being sent off the ship and onto shore um, sometimes it's just street evangelism sometimes they have uh, something that has been planned for months and months in advance but um, they help the community that is there that is that is the uh, like it's kind of like a it's very exciting it's very special and then hope obviously the whole point of all the ministry that the ship does is to share the hope that is Jesus Christ. Every single member of the, every single crew member of the ship, is a is is, is a uh, volunteer Christian, who um, has the same desire that I do to serve and obey Christ uh, in ministry through being a missionary. Uh, so, I'm going to wrap this up real quick. Uh, with a song soon, but I'm just going to say this now. I am planning on sending out a letter to all of you. Um, it will be, uh, hopefully, I will send them out by the end of the week, and you can receive them. You should receive them a short time after that. Um, and it will explain more in depth um, what the Logos Hope is, and uh, just more general information, as well as how you can uh, support me financially and through prayer. Um, uh, you, uh, if you're, if you're not sure that you're in like the church directory, because um, that's kind of what I'm going to be going off of, then, uh, or if you know that your information is incorrect, you can email the church, and then they will forward an email to me, um, and then I can make sure that you get a letter um, if through that. And if you also just want to contact me for general questions, I am, I am down to meet with you guys to just talk about, you know, what's on our hearts and. Uh, and uh, about the logos and about, uh, I can tell you, you know, more than I can tell you my story, and and, uh, and we can get to know each other more. Because yeah, it's a, uh, I'm I'm very excited to get to know you guys more, uh, as you as my sending church. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, now I'd like to uh, I'd like to sing a song for you guys. Um, it's a song that it's called uh, Salt and Light, and I feel like it kind of is. Uh, I love the message of the song. So if you listen to the words, I do feel like it can be applied to the. Uh, to um, to the heart of a missionary, which is really what I what I hope to be. So, pardon me while I go off screen and grab my guitar. my heart overflow with passion for your name and let my life be a song revealing who you are for you are salt and Oh, the love that sets me free You give hope to those in need 
you have written and redeemed my story. Let my eyes see your kingdom shine all around. Let my heart overflow with passion for your name and let my life be a song revealing who you are for you are salt and light you are love's great height you are deep and wide a consuming fire Let my eyes see your kingdom shine all around. Let my heart overflow with passion for your name. Let my life be a song revealing who you are. For you are salt and light. pray. Father, I commit Jonathan into your hands. Thank you for his heart to serve you with Lugos Hope. And Lord, thank you for the church uh, participating and partnering with him in this ministry. Your, Lord, it is your ministry, it is your calling, and thank you for working in his life and working through him. In Jesus' name, amen.
Lord, we believe. Lord, we believe. Lord, we believe. In history, you lived and died. You broke the chains. You rose to life. You are the hope living in us. And you are the rock in whom we trust. You are the light shining for all the world to see. You rose from the dead, conquering fear. Our Prince of Peace drawing us near. Jesus, our hope, living for all who will receive. Lord, we believe. Lord, we believe. Lord, we believe. Lord, we
Now into your presence, Lord, I will boldly come. It's only by your grace, O oh Lord, it's nothing I have. Grant me your servant heart That I might live like you As you set me apart I will humbly share the love I found in you I'm your servant, here I am Bended knees and open hands Lord, I hear your voice today. Lord, I hear and I obey. When I'm weak, will you be strong? When I'm lost, will you lead me home? Though I struggle on the way, would you use me anyway? Lord, I give myself today. Now into your presence, Lord, I will boldly come. It's only by your grace, O oh Lord, it's nothing I have done. Grant me your servant heart. That I might live like you. As you set me apart, I will humbly show the love I found in you. I'm your servant, here I am, bended knees and open hands. Lord, I hear your voice today. Lord, I hear and I obey. When I'm weak, will you be strong? When I'm lost, will you lead me home? Though I struggle on the way, would you use me anyway? Would I give myself today? Would I give myself today? give myself today morning. We are uh, excited to be here. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are enjoying uh, this uh, worship this morning. Uh, we've been talking about the rapture of the church. Today uh, our message is going to uh, focus on Knowing about the reality of the rapture. Knowing about the fact that the rapture is going to take place at any moment. How is that motivating me and encouraging me and moving me to share the goodness of our salvation to Jesus Christ so that your friends, your neighbors, your unbelieving sons and daughters, your uh, uh, relatives is not going to miss the rapture. I know that uh, 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 we enjoy coming to church. I know that, that we enjoy singing and, 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 and reading the scriptures and do the Christian thing we do in, uh, day in and day out. 
Uh, and I know that, you know, we enjoy fellowship and potlucks and all of this. But you know what? If we are going to live in view of the rapture, what is that doing to you right now? What is that doing to you in regards to how you look at your finances? What is it doing to you in regards to how you look at your time? What is that doing to you in relationship to the person, the people, men and women who, whom you rub shoulders with every day? Do you stop and think and, 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 and really think and say, you know what, maybe I should share the gospel to that person. Maybe I should share the gospel to a friend of mine. Maybe sometime this week I should send a message that reflect who I am and reflect the fact that the rapture is going to be here at any moment. It could be here right now and we'll be all gone. You know why I say that? Because we at Bethesda, and I believe the Bible teaches very clearly, that the rapture is going to take place before the seven years of tribulation. And we did that Sunday, right? So you would remember that. that the, the, the rapture of the church is indistinct with Yahweh's promise to the nation of Israel. The establishment of the kingdom is primarily to the nation of Israel. That would be 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ. That is the kingdom that is, that is spoken of in the prophets of the Old Testament and even in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Peter, in Peter chapter, one, uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3 of his speeches, his sermons. So he's talking about the kingdom. He's talking about Christ is going to come. And you know, which said Sunday, that when Christ is going to come, he's going to stand on the Mount of Olives. He's going to stand because the same way he was taken away, the same way he's going to come back. Remember that? The angel said that. The same way. The rapture, on the other hand, is in a twinkling of an eye. Right? And we're going to be caught up. Okay, we're going to be there. I don't know, but we're going to be there. Right? It's going to be in the twinkling of an eye. It will be a great separation. Houses of Christians, true Christians, true believers are going to be empty. There's, going to be, there's not going to be a crisis of real estate. There's going to be free houses everywhere. Maybe. Right? But houses of Christians are going to be empty. Uh, Christian doctors are going to be gone and and what else? And if somebody is driving a bus and he's a Christian, see this. If he's driving a bus and he's a Christian, he's going to be gone. What will happen to the bus? He's going to be so there's going to be a worldwide, now we call it worldwide pandemic. This is a worldwide catastrophe. This is like, this is like accidents all over the place. Insurance would be a hard time, you know, covering the cost of this great, Catastrophe. Uh, you know, if you are a Christian pilot, can you imagine that? You know? Can you imagine that? Planes would be left without pilots, so there would be collisions in the skies. I mean, I mean, homes would be empty, and fathers and mothers and children, and, and there's going to be great separation. If you have a loved one that's not a Christian, you're going to be separated from that loved one. If you have a son, daughters, wife, husband, there's going to be a great separation with this rapture. And that will happen in a twinkling of an eye. Would it be good if God said to us right now, you know what, Joel Molina, in 48 hours, I'm going to have the rapture. Then you have 48 hours. What, what would you do with your 48 hours? Huh? You, you, you know, I mean, should we like say, you know what, at Bethesda, we're going to have a, a, a fellowship. We're going to go and, and be in the fellowship hall and, and, and we're going to play games and we're going to wait for the rapture because it's going to take place in 48 hours. We're going to be in this church and we're going to be singing hallelujah, praise the Lord, because the rapture is going to take in 48 hours. You know what I would do? I would go to the streets of Briar Lake, to the streets of Savage, to the streets of Minneapolis. I would, I would, I would wish and I would desire that every people, every Christian, every follower of Jesus Christ at Bethesda Church would go there and proclaim that the rapture is going to take place in 48 hours. But we don't know that. Rapture could take place at any moment. There will be great separation, global catastrophe. You know what? Let me ask you this. It would require a global 
explanation. Right? When there are millions of people are going to, uh, millions are going to disappear, people are going to be confused. Where's my mom? Where's my dad? Where's my brothers and sisters? Where, where's my, where are my friends? I remember back, I don't know what year was this, but we were just coming back to the States, and I got invited by a, by a church to speak. And, uh, you know, somebody uh, that is so smart in California predicted that the rapture is going to take place at the sun, I mean, Saturday. When I was speaking on Sunday, and that, that Saturday the rapture was going to take place. And, uh, and people were shook up because, you know, the people are talking about, you know, yeah, I mean, it was a conversation. I remember that. And uh, I show up in the, showed up in the church and I said to the people, I said, I'm surprised you guys are still here. <laughs> you know? And they look at me like, you're here too. So, you know, I guess we're... <laughs> you know, here's what I'm saying to you, that we are not to... You know, you can guess. Your guess is as good as mine, okay? <laughs> but we are not to be prophets. We're to be trusting the Lord that his word is going to come through. The rapture is going to take place. And when that happens, the catastrophe, the, the world is going to be in a brink of disaster. The world is, I mean, look, the economic uh, impact this would do to the world. I think that the rapture, I believe that the rapture is going to be the precursor for the unification of the world. The Antichrist is going to come and he's going to promise peace and safety. He's going to say, don't worry about it. You know, the aliens took them away. And you might, well, you know, you might be in your living room right now and say, well, Pastor Mina is going haywire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what do you mean the aliens? You know, that's not a very far explanation nowadays. Really. I mean, a lot of the movies that you have, a lot of the uh, communication that you're getting from, from media, I mean, the alien seems to be like normal, right? A normal thinking. And given that evidence that a lot of people are going to disappear, and, and there's no explanation because it's a twink, in a twinkling of an eye, you know what? We have enemies, the Antichrist would say. And the only way that we can do this is for us to unite. Forget your religion. I am the Christ, and I'm going to promise you peace. Let me tell you. The rapture is going to take place within a historical time frame. It's not going to be magic, okay? It's not going to be that all of a sudden, you know, there are no, you know, there's only going to be a... a or let me just back up. In the book of Daniel, the, the, uh, uh, the God showed the king, who he thinks is the, he is the most powerful in the world, and showed him what I would call the, the history of human civilization. Okay? There's a gold, there's silver, bronze, iron, and iron and clay. Now, in this image... God said, I am showing you the kingdoms of the world. So right now, you and I are living right at the foot. Okay? That's where you and I are. And according to Daniel, in chapter 12, verse 4, he said, you know, God said, close this book. Until the end, many will go here and there. And, and you know, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, is actually predicting a, a, a transportation advancement and an information ad advancement. You know what? That's the kingdom of this world that God was stealing Nebuchadnezzar. That kingdom, that, that characteristic of the kingdom of this world, human kingdoms, were at the very end. And guess what? Right now, we're actually in a very, I mean, fast, right? Quick. Instant. Right? Right now, let me tell you, if it's not instant, people are not going to be interested in it. Somebody said, you know what, if you don't give, I, I'm in a conference. Uh, this was just last year while I was in California. And, and guess what? Every speaker has 12 minutes. 
And I'm trying to wonder, like, okay, the guy is not even, wasn't even e able to develop what he wants to say. You know, it's just like saying hi and then gone, you know. I mean, I said at least it coincided my idea of what homiletics is, right? Speak up, shut up, and, you know, I mean, stand up, shut up, I mean, stand up, speak up, then shut up, you know. <laughs> Three roles, right? At least, I mean, but, at any rate, we are instant, we're, right now, this is an instant society. If you want to get it, if you want to be effective, it has to be quick. You know, that is one of the characteristics of the last days, according to Daniel. Many is going to go there fast, and information are going to increase. Knowledge is going to increase. You know, nowadays, I was just telling uh, my wife, I said, honey, so much knowledge going around, especially in this pandemic, right? That you don't know anything, right? So much, I'm so, let me tell you, I was reading something uh, uh, for the last, I don't know, several days, trying to research a subject. You know, and this morning I finally decided, okay, I don't know anything. Because I've listened to this and this and this, and I've read here and there. And There's so much knowledge going around, but people don't know anything. Not only that, but we're living in a post-truth uh, society. It's no longer like, it's no longer my truth is different than your truth, even though but they're both opposite. Now we're living in a place where there's no truth. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you content. Whatever makes you satisfied. Anyway, you know what? The rapture is going to take place in a twinkling of an eye. Okay? You ask me a question. Uh, what will happen after? What if little, you know, 21-year-old Johnny is so stubborn, even though we're going to church, even though he heard the gospel several times, but he did not receive Jesus Christ. He's going to be left behind. Is there any hope for him? It's not a natural question, especially from a consumer like you and I. We've got to make sure that there is a second chance for uh, John Smith, right? I, I, you know, I'm just going to uh, summarize the text for you. Uh, second, you know, Matthew 24 and Matthew 25 tells us about what will happen after the rapture. Uh, Revelation chapter 16 and chapter 9 and chapter, 20, uh, chapter 6 tells us what will happen about the rapture. And you know, it is so scary. I read these verses again this morning. Let me tell you, I got scared by reading this. I mean, you're talking about 50... Let's just, let's just read one. Revelation chapter 6. Okay, just one. And I'm going to enumerate to you this tribulation that will take place upon the earth during the tribulation period. Uh, Revelation chapter 16, right? This is, this is about this, uh, the seven bowls of judgment. Wow. You guys opening your Bibles and looking at that? Isn't that scary? Seven bowls of judgment. Look at verse 21. The last verse in the chapter. It said... And the great hail from heaven fell upon men. Its hailstone about the weight of a talent. Let that sink in. That's 
You know, when you have time, I want you to go back to that verse. I'm not going to tell you now, but this is horrible. This is a rain that has never been, I mean, this is like the mother of all rain, okay? The mother of all hailstorm. So I want you to look, up, look it up. I mean, it's easy. You just Google it. What is this? What, how heavy is this hailstorm? Okay? And I want you to reflect on that. Because what I want you to see is this. About the weight of a talent, and then men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, since the plague was exceedingly great. That is repeated throughout the book of Revelation. Just, that is repeated throughout the, the tribulation period. That people are going to be suffering, getting this thing, and struggling, but they res- the response is what? Instead of repenting, they blaspheme God. Because you know what? In first, Second Thessalonians 2.11, it said, God is going to send a strong delusion so that people will believe a lie. Now that's happening today, right? God is not sending a strong delusion yet. But today, it's easy for people to believe a lie. Even Christians will believe a lie. When? The, 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 the issue... It's me. When the issue is myself, me, myself, and I, we believe anything in order to preserve me, myself, and I. We even believe things contrary to the gospel when the issue is me, myself, and I. Next week, we're going to talk about surrender. We're going to talk about bef- right now, right now, the starting point right now. If I am to be God's person in this time, right now, I have to be a person that is fully surrendered to God. That's what we're going to talk about next week. But so a strong delusion. Even though there's, there's, there's chaos and when there's somebody coming in and giving an explanation and providing a false peace, right? You believe the guy. You unite the guy. I've always wondered, I've always wondered, you know, I mean, right now, there's over a billion Muslims in the world. And right now, there's a very big distinction, barrier, between Islam and Christianity, right? Because one thing about Islam, you know, I actually got slapped in the face while I was in Indonesia because I dare said to the lady sitting beside me in the bus that Jesus Christ is the only true God. And that was a blasphemy because he was a Muslim, right? Hey, I'm always thinking, like, how, does, how, do, how would Antichrist unite this? Easy. When the world is in crisis, you could preach anything you want. When the world is in crisis, you can get into man, uh, the minds of men and the hearts of men. You know that. So, the seven years of tribulation is going to take place right after the rapture. Is, it, is there going to be salvation? Yes, there is. God is going to seal 144,000 from the tribes of Israel. But he is going to resume his kingdom program and he's going to, to seal 144,000 and, and they're going to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. It's going to be a worldwide preaching. And there, this 144,000 is going to say, the king is coming. The king is coming. His kingdom is going to be here. They are going to have a hard time because people will say the king is already here. 
the Antichrist, who is pre presenting himself like Christ, and who is going to do signs and wonders, and false prophets, and false Christ all over the place, and people will say, he is already here. The one that you are presenting, it's still coming. What we have now, we, he is already here. And you cannot participate in anything, be it religious or economics. You know what? I've always thought that uh, the, the, the uh, you know, the, we, uh, people are smart, right? Uh, you can close churches, uh, you know, people complain, but, but if you close Walmart, Target, and all those places, guess what? You'd have demonstration on the street, right? When, when Mao Zedong uh, decided to change He's like saying, he, he's, the, the word is, the, re, the nearest way to reach man's heart is through his stomach, right? If you want to touch issues and really touch it in a significant way, speak to the economy of a country. And if the economy is going to be affected, then hearts are going to be affected. That's why when the Antichrist is going to come, he's going to say, Unless you have my mark, you cannot buy nor sell. What's that mean? You cannot be, basically you can't be a person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You cannot, you don't have a significant life, significant living. Because you know what? We have, you know, exchange of commodity is part of human life, right? It's part of human interaction. It's part of human function. So at this point in time, when these people are, when this 144,000 are going to preach, you know, they, they preach the gospel of the kingdom until the end. The end means that Christ is going to come and set his foot on earth to reign, right? To judge, to make war, and reign for a for thousand years. When this 144,000 are going to be preaching, people are not going to believe them. And, the, and some of the people that are going to believe them, they're going to be killed and they're going to be, you're, they're going to be beheaded because they're not going to be accepting the mark of the Antichrist. And they're going to be beheaded. And, and, and you know what? Let me tell you. It'd be amazing to me, you know. Let's just say, uh, you know, Pastor Molina is wrong. And the Antichrist is going to show up, you know, a month from now, and would say, you know what? If you don't have a mark, you can't buy, you can't sell. If you don't have a mark, you're going to be uh, in one of these parks, and you're going to be beheaded. If you're, you know, what would you do? Let me just, uh, that was just the introduction of my message, and we're almost done. But this is not the tribulation period yet. We know that. This is not the world global catastrophe that the Bible speaks about. You know what day is today? I want you to think about it. Today isn't a day to worry about the future. Today isn't a day to worry about when can we open the church so that we can be here together. <laughs> today is not a day to worry about how can I have this and how can I do this. Today. Let me ask you what today. Let me, let me show you what today is. For he says, in, ac in an acceptable time, I have heard you. And, the, and in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now, it's the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. When you are in your homes this morning, listening to me from every part of the country, I don't know, some of you are 
a day ahead. Some of you are a day behind. But one thing we have in common, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ this morning, today is the day of salvation. So if you want to share the gospel, if you want to pray for those that are not Christians yet, worry about them, have concern about them, and pray about them today, and make a strategy and plan today, and say, Lord, please help me. How can I share the gospel of your salvation to a friend of mine? That should be the, that, that should be the one. When we're talking about the rapture, and we're talking about now, that should be the one that we get into our hearts. You don't have to be, uh, you know, go and shout in the streets. Don't, you know, it was Sir uh, I mean, Francis of Assisi who said, you know, preach at all times, use words if you have to. In other words, let your life speak, but be bold also. Let me tell you, Paul said, we are in a spiritual warfare. Right? Amen? We are in a spiritual warfare. You know, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't feel like you are in spiritual warfare and like it's smooth sailing, right? Something is wrong someplace. Okay? Because it should not be a smooth sailing for a devoted follower of Jesus. We should be in a spiritual warfare. And Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, right? Describing the armor, beginning in verse 10, right? He's describing the armor of the Lord, the sword of the Spirit. He said, put it on. Put on the whole armor of God. You know, I like Bethesda because we have the whole armor, right? We have, we love the Bible, we love the scriptures. We study the scriptures. We, get, we, we want to know God by knowing the scriptures. We have the whole armor of God. Put it on. But you know what? How Paul ended that? Let me, uh, let me read that to you. Very interesting. Okay? Let me, uh, I want to get your attention with this. He said, after discussing all the armors, right? He said in verse 18 of Ephesians 6, praying always. With all, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful in this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, and for me, that I will be comfortable, that I will have, will have all the money I need to travel, that I would have, is that what he said? No. The spiritual warfare, and when he asked Christians in Ephesus, the warriors, when he asked them to join him in prayer, with all prayers and sincerity, he said, pray for me that God will open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I was actually in tears when I was praying this morning. Because I was convicted with that. If there's anyone that is so bold, it is the Apostle Paul, right? He said this, verse 20 of that verse, For which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may say, speak boldly as I ought to speak. I thought to myself, how would I respond if somebody throws me in prison, put me in jail because of the gospel? Would I speak boldly? Would I need prayer to be, that I will be able to speak boldly because I am ambassador? I'm the, I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to stop. That was, that's just the introduction. Next Sunday, we're going to talk about the mark of an ambassador. But, and then from there, we'll go about the, sac the surrender. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. An ambassador, okay? An ambassador. You and I are ambassadors. And an, an, uh, usually, an ambassador is a diplomat, right? It's a diplomat. Okay, the highest diplomat would be the Secretary of State, Right? The ambassador would be the diplomat that is representing 
for us is a representative in a country, right? We have an ambassador. I met some of them actually. Uh, I met two of them while I was in Zambia. You know, they're very good people. They know what they're talking about. But you know what? They are very careful not to offend the host country. They are. They are actually ambassadors. Are public relation officers. That's what they are. They're public relation officers, and they have to know what they're talking about so that they can then adapt their message to that person or to this segment or to that group or to that place. Ambassadors are like, they're they are just like diplomats. Okay? We're ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you this. We are more of prophets than we are diplomats. We speak on behalf of God no matter what. Amen? I'm an ambassador and I open my... That's why Paul said, open my mouth boldly. Because he is not a diplomat. He is a, he is a person, he's an apostle of God, he's a follower of Jesus Christ that declares that Jesus is the only answer no matter what. That's, that, that, that's who we are. We're ambassador, and, and as ambassador, I am in chain, okay? I am. Right now, I am in chain. I can do no less, no more, and nothing else than to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that the only solution to our world's problem is Jesus Christ himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? He is. So if you are not convinced of that this morning, please call me. And we will have good conversation. <laughs> This week. But I just want to emphasize this. This week, be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Let us redeem our time. Let's redeem our time. Amy Carmichael, a missionary to India, who founded a person. Uh, 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 Orphanage, an orphanage in India, rescuing young girls and women in India. Actually, she was asked one time, one of the girls was asked one time, what makes you attracted to this uh, orphanage? And the girl answered, because Amma, that means Amy Carmichael, loves us. Because Amma loves us. How many people in this neighborhood, in Twin Cities, how many people that you know, why are you attracted to Jesus Christ? Why are you attracted to the God of the universe? Because Bethesda loves us. Jesus did not come to the world to condemn the world, but he came so the world will be saved through him. Amy Carmichael said this. She said, We have all eternity to celebrate the victories, but only a few hours before sunset to win them. Let's pray. Father God, may we be convicted this morning that this world is not my home. It's not our home. Words passing through. But at this very moment, Lord, we want to come to you to help us, to strengthen us, so that we can love our neighbors through your love. So we become your heart, your hands, your feet, enriching our neighbors with the goodness of the gospel. Thank you that you're coming for us. And Lord, we're, we're looking for that day. But right now, I want, I want to pray that you will help all of us to be strengthened in the spirit, in the inner man, so that in this spiritual warfare, Lord, we will be given boldness to speak and declare the gospel. Of Jesus Christ. In your name. Amen.
When my life work is ending and I cross the swelling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side, and in smile be the first to welcome me. I shall know Him, I shall know Redeemed by His side, I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, by the prints of the nails in His hand. Oh, the soul-thrilling rapture when I see His blessed face, and the luster of His kindly gleaming eyes. How my full heart will praise Him for the mercy and the grace that prepare for me a mansion in the sky. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeemed by His side I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know nails in his hand. Yes, I shall know him, I shall know him, and redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him, by the prints of the nails in his hand. I know my Lord Jesus Christ being a shadow of the doubt. But the main question that I want to ask you before we close this morning is, does he know you? Does Jesus Christ know you? Because he said in Matthew 7, he said, depart from me, for I never knew you. Paul said, the Lord knows those who are his. So I'm not going to leave you hanging this morning. If you are listening to me right now and you're saying to yourself, how? I'm not prepared. I don't know if I'm going when the rapture takes place. I don't know if I'm going to have that opportunity to see my Savior because really I don't know. There's one thing that you can do this morning so that Jesus Christ is going to know you and your name will be written in the book of life. Because that's the most important thing. Does he know you? I want to invite you this morning if you're listening to me and you're not sure, you don't know, to believe the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and he rose from the grave to demonstrate to you and I, to you this morning, that there is victory over death and over the grave and he wants to give you an eternal life this morning. And all you have to do this morning, I said, Lord, I believe. I believe. I will give my life to you and I want you in my life as my Lord and Savior. As, I'm pray, as I will close in prayer this morning, and you want to make that decision this morning, just raise your hand while I'm praying. I, don't know, I know I can't see you, but the Lord knows you. You don't even have to raise your hand. Just open your heart. The Lord knows you. And if you do that, angels in heaven are rejoicing because you are joining us to meet the Lord and the air. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for those that are listening and watching this morning. They have yet to make a decision 
to believe you, to make it real. I pray, Lord, that you speak to their hearts this morning. I pray that they will open their hearts and they will say, yes, I believe. Yes, I want you as my Lord and my Savior. Yes, I accept your sacrifice at the cross of Calvary. I also pray for each one of us who claim your name this morning, who has been washed by the blood of the Lamb, whose lives have been transformed by the power of your grace. Lord, I pray that this morning we will wake up and not be complacent, not be content with living mediocre Christianity. But Lord, we rise above the level of mediocrity. Rise above our circumstances. Rise above our problems. For we know that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. We praise you and we magnify your name. In your love and in your grace. And in your care. We commit all our lives. Amen.